Hello again. Before we begin, I'd like to tell you a story. Back in 2020, I bought my first film camera, a Canon AU1 program. It came with an FD 50mm f1.4 lens. I took so many pictures and I fell in love with this camera, sparking a newfound passion for film photography. It came with me everywhere, from Wales to China and Vietnam, and then Kazakhstan. And that, unfortunately, is where our story ends. I've lost my Canon A1 program and the 50mm lens that came with it. Well, I say lost, I'm 99.99% sure that I left it in a hotel room, but upon asking the staff there, it had mysteriously disappeared. Although I can't say this for sure, but yeah, whatever. Anyway, I loved using that 50mm lens on my X-Pro2. It really was a great lens, but now it's gone. But it just so happens that a company called TT Artisan reached out to me recently and offered me the chance to review a lens. And it just so happens that that lens they sent me is a 50mm f1.2 manual focus lens. So here are my thoughts and impressions about this lens. Is it the best budget lens ever? I should add that I've not been paid for this video. They did send me the lens for free, but it's an honest review. So let's talk about build quality. This lens feels well built. It's a solid all metal design with dampened focus and aperture rings that feel smooth and silky to use. The lens cap is metal as well and this screws on. I'm not entirely sure that I like this metal cap. I'm a little bit worried about scratching the glass when taking it on and off. I would like to get a plastic cap to mitigate this risk. However, I do like that it does screw on because this means it shouldn't pop off when I'm transporting my camera. The aperture ring is on the front of the lens and the ring is clicked and has raised tabs to help with rotating. You can see here the star shaped aperture which we'll be looking at in the bokeh section later on. When putting this lens on my Fujifilm X-Pro2, there's no play in the mount. It feels really solid. In terms of aesthetics, I really love the look of this lens. It looks vintage and pretty cool when paired with the Fujifilm X-Pro2. Sharpness. Wide open at f1.2, this lens is sharp, but there are some limitations. Firstly, the texture is muted and it's kind of like a gravy when it's just out of focus on your subject and there is this steady bloom around those areas. At 50 millimeters and with such a fast aperture, you really have to be a pro manual focuser if you want to shoot this lens wide open. You can see here that the focal plane is razor thin, so you need to be super accurate when focusing. Another thing at f1.2 is the close focus performance is pretty poor when compared to the mid or far focus. If you look at these images, you can see that they, they are tack sharp, um, and this is at f1.2. But if you look at these closer shots, the bloom in is present and nothing is really that sharp. You can get rid of it by going to f2.8, but I think for work, unless the subject is far away, I probably will never shoot wide open with this lens. As you already know, this is a manual focus lens, so you'll need a really good eye to get the focus spot on. However, if you have a camera that can utilize focus peaking, you're in for a treat. I use focus peaking on my X-Pro2, which really helps because my eyesight is quite poor, um, and I just love this feature. Borka! Below... <laughs> Sorry about that, I don't know why I said it like that. So if you go below f2.8, you get this really beautiful bokeh. Um, you get these round, low contrast bokeh balls. I personally really enjoy the bokeh this lens provides. For comparison, I took some shots on my Canon 50mm f1.8, the Nifty 50 as it's also known, and they look quite different, don't they? Glare and flare. As you may know, I'm from the good old land of Cymru, Wales, so sunshine is something that we cherish as it's super, super rare. The TT Artisan 50mm doesn't really have much glare, uh, the first word that comes to mind really is natural or kind of um, natural looking glare, I suppose. When pointing this lens at the sun, it results in very neutral looking shots. I kind of like the glare, I don't like it to be too much, so this is right up my street. Chromatic aberration. This lens has little chromatic aberration, and when it happens, it is in the bokeh as a cyan or in the highlights as magenta. So what are my real impressions about this lens? Well. I think it's a fantastic lens for the price, for $98, I think it's an absolute steal, and I think if you're just thinking about it, just go for it, it's a quality budget lens. It's a super sharp lens, and I find I shoot on f8 quite a lot, because I like street photography, and it really works well for me, like I said before, the focus peaking, um, these two, this combination just goes really, really well together. 
It's also got that vintage look, which I love personally, and I love the clicks of the aperture as well. It's just really satisfying. And also helpful if, you, if you're shooting at night or something and you can't see, you kind of know what aperture you're at with the clicks helping at that height. <laughs> you know, it's not a perfect lens, it's $98 for goodness sake so you're not going to be looking at you know it's not it's not serious glass is it really and it's not to be taken seriously but it, you can get some serious results from this though and it's just i think absolutely quality for the money so if you're looking for a budget vintage style manual lens this is a good option so who is this lens for i would say this is a great lens for many uses if you're an amateur photographer for example this is just a no-brainer, to be honest. Personally, I'm not sure if it's really the quality required for professional work, although that does depend on the look you're going for, and it does give some interesting looks, so it might work for you in that respect. That's up to you. As a photographer who likes the street and urban genres, I think this lens gives my images just this really nice kind of vintage look, which I enjoy, so I think this lens will be staying on my camera for quite a long time. Well, that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you gained something useful out of this video and maybe um, will purchase this lens. If you do, let me know and let me know how you get on with it. I'd like to hear about all your comments or if you've got another suggestion that is a good budget lens, let me know in the comments below as well. I do like to hear your thoughts and your comments on that. And all that's left to say really is thank you very much for watching. Thank you to the new and old subscribers alike. And I'll see you in the next video.